welcome to Crime Alley Comics. It's time for another comic book artist spotlight. This is episode number 25. We will be uh, focusing on Mark Bagley. So Mark Bagley was born August 7th of 1957. He was born to a military family in Frankfurt, West Germany. After his work in the military at Ringling College of Art and Design, Bagley continued trying to work into the comic book industry. While working a construction job, he suffered a severe injury to his leg while using a, hacks a handsaw that required 132 stitches. <laughs> Ouch. He eventually ended up working for Lockheed Martin making technical drawings. And then uh, we're going to talk about Marvel Comics because that's where he started in comic books. So in 1983, Marvel Comics Editor-in-Chief Jim Shooter created the Marvel Tryout Book to draw new talent into the comic book industry. The contest involved a <clears throat> deconstructed comic book which contestants could complete and submit to Marvel. The winner would be awarded a professional assignment with Marvel. At the time, Bagley was 27 years old and living in Merida, Georgia. He had almost given up on trying to find a job in, the, in comics and was uh, satisfied with his position at Lockheed Martin. Bagley was reluctant to enter the contest because of the cost of the tryout book itself. His friend Cliff Biggers gave him the book and persuaded Bagley to enter the contest. Bagley won first prize for penciling, uh, finishing ahead of thousands of other hopefuls. After winning the contest, he didn't hear from Marvel for several months. After approaching Shooter at a comic convention, Bagley was assigned to a series of low-profile penciling, penciling jobs. His comic work during this period included Visionaries, a comic book based on the 1980s toy line, various titles in the New Universe line, backup stories in Captain America, and the first series of Marvel Universe cards. Stay. In 1989, Tom DeFalco and Ron Friends created a team of teenage superheroes called the New Warriors. The following year, Marvel launched a new series based on these heroes and assigned Bagley and writer Fabian Nisiza to the title. Bagley stayed on the title until issue number 25, at which point he left to transition directly onto The Amazing Spider-Man. When Eric Larson left The Amazing Spider-Man in 1991, Bagley was assigned to the title. He and David McKinley introduced the Carnage character in The Amazing Spider-Man number 361, which I think we're probably all quite aware of, that came out in 1992. I do not have a copy of that, unfortunately. Uh, let's see, and produced the Venom Lethal Protector limited series in 1993. Although not the first artist to draw either Venom or Eddie Brock, Bagley's version of both characters are widely considered to be the most popular versions of them by fans. Bagley was one of the artists on the Maximum Carnage and Clone Saga, which ran through the Spider-Man titles. Bagley's artwork was used extensively for licensed material appearing on everything from plates and cups to credit cards and even video games 
uh, such the amazing Spider-Man Lethal Foes, released exclusive, exclusively in Japan in 2012. In 1997, Begley collaborated with writer Kurt B Busick on a new team of superheroes, the Thunderbolts. A group of supervillains disguised as superheroes with the final pages of the first issue of the series revealing that the Thunderbolts were actually the masters of evil. A surprise twist carefully guarded by Marvel. <laughs> In 2000, Marvel's then publisher Bill Jemis was looking to relaunch Marvel's primary franchises in a way that would make them accessible to newer readers. Ultimate Spider-Man would be a title that began the Spider-Man mythos from the beginning, set in a modern time. Bagley was assigned to Ultimate Spider-Man with writer Brian Michael Bendis. The bendis Bagley partnership of 111 consecutive issues made their partnership one of the longest in American comic book history and the longest run by a Marvel creative team. Beating out Stan Lee and Jack Kirby on Fantastic Four, Bagley collaborated with Bendis on The Pulse and a four-issue arc of Mighty Avengers. Bagley, a Bagley's long and successful run on Ultimate Spider-Man earned him recognition in Wizard Magazine's Top 10 Artists of the 2000s in Wizard two, uh, number 219. Ranked number two on the list, article writer Mark Allen, uh, Mark Allen Haverty, noted of Bagley, no other artist came close to the number of comics Bagley sold in the 2000s, nor the number of top 20 comics he was a part of. Now for DC. Bagley switched over to DC in 2008 uh, and signed on an exclusive three-year contract with DC Comics. His first assignment as a DC exclusive, The Trinity, Weekly, weekly series written by Kurt Busick, again, <laughs> featured Spider-Man, Batman, and Wonder Woman. Bagley drew four issues of Batman, written by Judd Winnick. This was in the post-Battle uh, for the Cowl world, with Dick Grayson having taken over as the Dark Knight. Bagley then teamed with writer James... Robinson on Justice League of America, Bagley drew most, most of issues 38 through 53. And a lot of those books uh, that I've been mentioning so far, he did, didn't necessarily do the cover art on, but he did a lot of the interior work. The Return to Marvel. In 2011, Bagley left DC and returned to Marvel and the Ultimate Spider-Man. He reunited with Brian Michael Bendis and drew the Death of Spider-Man arc in issues 156 and 160. As he started the ultimate imprint alongside Bendis, he was also called for Cataclysm and another title, Ultimate End, which ended the imprint. And the last pages of Spider-Men Spider 2, which set up its return. Bagley and Bendis teamed for a creator-owned series, Brilliant, which was published through Marvel's Icon Comics imprint. It has similarities to Mark Miller's own Icon comic, Kick-Ass, as it explores the idea of superheroes existing in the real world. However, unlike Kick-Ass, the characters have actual superpowers. Brian Michael Bendis and Bagley worked on Avengers Assemble, an Avengers title produced uh, 
concurrently with Brilliant. To differentiate between other Avengers titles, a symbol consisted of the roster uh, present in the Avengers films, but set in the present Marvel continuity. As part of the Marvel Now initiative, Bagley and writer Matt Frankton, or Frankton relaunched the Fantastic Four series in 2012. Bagley and Mark Wade collaborated on a Hulk series in 2014. In late 2017, Bagley made a return to Venom with issue number 155, Lethal Protector, written by Mike Costa. This brief return lasted only four issues. Now just a couple of art quirks that they uh, have written down here. According to Bagley, uh, drawing crowd scenes are his weak point because he becomes uh, worn out on them <laughs> and finds them difficult to render in a timely fashion. He dislikes drawing Captain America as well. And the last thing I have on Bagley is they, that him and his wife Patty have a daughter named Angie. Now, uh, one other thing I want to point out, I want to just kind of give you guys some idea of some of the DC and Marvel comics that he has worked on. So if you are interested in collecting um, Mark Bagley's work, these are some books that you can pick up. Batman, number 688 through 691, that's from 2009. DCU Halloween Special, 09, number one from, from 2009. Justice League of America, volume two, number 38 through 48, and number 50 through 53, that's 2009 through 2011. Justice League Cry for Justice, number two. Uh, Justice Society of America, number 41 and 42 from 2010. Power Company Sapphire, number one from 2002. Spider-Man and Batman, number one. Uh, Intercompany Crossover, 1995. I think I actually have a copy of that, <laughs> but I didn't, didn't pull it out. Superboy Volume 4, number 77, from 2000. Superman, 80-page giant, number 3, from 2000. And Trinity, number 1 through 52, from 2008 to 2009. Now, the Trinity books, I think, are the one that he mostly did interior work on, if I remember correctly. Now for Marvel Comics. All New X-Men Volume 2, number 1 through 19, that's from 2015 to 2017. Alpha Flight, number 86, from 1990. The Amazing Scarlet Spider, number 1 and 2, from 1995. The Amazing Spider-Man, number 345, 351 through 358, 361 through 365, 368 through 375, 378 through 404, and 407 through 415. And that ran from 1991 to 1996. The Amazing Spider-Man Annuals, number 22 and 23, from, uh, for 1989 and 1988. Avengers Annual, number 18, from 1989. Avengers 2, Wonder Man and Beast, number 1 through 3. That's from the year 2000. Ben Riley, The Scarlet Spider, number 1 through 5 from 2017. Brilliant, number 1 through 5 from 2011 and 2012. Captain America, number 366 through 369. Number 371 through 383 number 385, and annual number 9. Those from 1990 to 1991. Captain America, Citizen Citizen V, or Citizen 5, I don't know for sure what that is, uh, 98, number 1, from 1990 to 1991.
from 1999. Cataclysm from 2003. Oh, Cataclysm, The Ultimate's Last Stand. Daredevil number 283 and Annual number 5 from 1989 and 1990. Fantastic Four number 351 from 1991. Fantastic Four volume 3 number 51 through 54 from 2002. Fantastic Four volume 4 number 1 through 13 and number 5 annual 2013. Fear itself, The Fearless number 1 through 12, that's 2011 to 2012. Hawkeye Earth's Mightiest Marksman, number one, 1998. Heroes Reborn, Young Allies, number one, that's from 2000. Uh, Hulk, volume three, number one through 16. Annual number one, that's from 2014 to 2015. And Hulk, the official movie adaptation, number one, from 2003. Now, let me show you a few books that I have that Mark Bagley actually did the covers on. Um, I do have books that Mark Bagley done the interior work as well, but uh, and did not do the cover. So uh, I didn't pull any of those out. I just mainly wanted to show you some covers. And I think a lot of these are probably going to be familiar to most of you if you're big Spider-Man fans and Venom fans and so on. Here is uh, The Amazing Spider-Man number 362. And of course 361 was, you know, Carnage Part 1. This one is The Amazing Spider-Man number 363. Amazing Spider-Man number 378. So yes, I mostly pulled Marvel Comics tonight since most of his career was Marvel. And uh, this is the Amazing Spider-Man number 394. Nice little uh, foil cover. The Amazing Scarlet Spider number one. Very cool cover. Venom Lethal Protector number three. Venom Lethal Protector number one. And the last book I have is a DC book. This is Blackest Night, Justice League of America, number 40, from February of 2010. And there you have it. That is what uh, I have prepared for Mark Bagley. I hope you all enjoyed this um, spotlight tonight um, Mark Bagley's a, a great artist he's been around for a long time and he has quite the following <laughs> uh, as far as fans and uh, and I know he does do comic conventions and so on I don't know of any that he's coming to currently but uh, I would like to meet him and get a few of these books signed so anyway please like if you enjoyed this video and if you have not subscribed to my channel, I would appreciate a sub and click on that bell if you want to be notified of my next video. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. Uh, I'm enjoying going through and doing these um, spotlight videos. Uh, you know, I'm learning things and I hope that you guys are learning things. <laughs> 
And uh, please leave comments and uh, any ideas that you might have. If there's somebody that you would like me to do a spotlight on, um, please feel free to leave a comment and say, hey, could you do a spotlight on whoever? And I'd be glad to look into that. So um, I'm going to keep doing this, you know, every Wednesday <laughs> the best I can. I wasn't sure if I was going to make it. For this one because I got a lot of things going on today but uh, I'm getting it recorded now it will be up Wednesday so <laughs> thank you all for joining me have a great week and God bless <laughs>